This is RSPB Update, episode 363, recorded Friday, June 1st, 2012. Getting Roasted. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this RSBNB update episode, the 1st of June, 2012. Quite a big week this week, RuneScape, mm. and in uh, tech news as well, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, it's just us two uh, usual blokes here with you, y'all, this week. Oh, yes. I, I did something totally bad there, didn't I? I just called us blokes, and I used a southern U.S. y'all thing. So? I just don't think those t- those two uh, pieces of slang are meant to go together. No one cares, Shane, except for you. But you're one of those uh, OCD type of person. <laughs> okay. All right. So this week is the the thing everybody was waiting for: the Queen uh, Black Dragon. Oh. Uh, you were. Um... <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to have to face her. <laughs> Yeah, you decided you were going to put yourself in front of her fire breath and whatever else she throws at you, so uh, so I didn't have to, and I could look at the more calm and peaceful Queen Jubilee <laughs> setting. So, um, tell us a I, bit about the boss. I died. A horrible, horrible death. How many it times? It turns out, uh, died three times so far. Uh, the first two times, it was me trying to record the little little video that hopefully some of you are watching right now. Uh, you'll see how you may notice that it was very laggy, and it's because I found out that using fraps while recording a RuneScape is pretty bad, unless you have a supercomputer from the year 2015, or, <laughs> or you borrow Shane's, either way. Um, so yeah, it did not go well for me. I lost... Quite a bit of sardi brews, but I made out of those. So I'm not, not don't care as much. Uh, only thing I really had to buy was the uh, restore uh, super restores because I didn't have any. Um, so yeah, about the boss. So basically, there are four phases. Uh, first phase relatively relatively easy. You just hit her until she her health her health drains. Uh, what happens also is that after the first phase, you have to really pay attention, which is one thing I was not doing, was pay attention to the artifacts around, because they will change color, and if you don't hit to get them right away, they the dragon will spawn level 123 worms, which are completely annoying. Um, lastly, after that, she'll also start summoning tortured souls, which do two things. One, hit you, and two, heal the queen. So you have to try and kill them right away, but they also have a special ability, which kind of hurts you really bad if you're not paying attention. And that was what was getting me because recording it at the same time was just not fast enough to click to get out of it. So I lost a lot of stuff doing that, which I'm very happy about. Um, So yeah, uh, second phase. The second phase is she'll... uh, she'll, The first, she'll summon one tortured soul to fight you, and after you defeat her... You tag another artifact, and which is to the southwest. You tag that artifact, artifact, and then she'll phase three. She's a lot weaker to mage, but highly resistant to physical. But you're, you're, most people are doing it or are ranging it anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, she'll summon two torture souls instead of one, and more firewalls, which you'll have to run around. And after the third phase, you'll. Uh, the fourth phase, which I kind of got to on my third try, but I, it, bleh, you know, or it's like got got me at the end. Um, so summon four tortured souls, and you and the second they come, you really have to get out of there, or else you're gonna get hit really, really hard. And one of the other things you have to also keep a note, uh, keep looking at is one of them, one of them run to a corner and try to say something about you know stopping time. You have to kill that one right away, or else you're totally screwed. Or because it'll Why freeze. Is time stop or something? Yes, time will physically stop for you. But hmm, I wonder the if they're using time to... runes. Uh, and so, yeah, basically, uh, 
time will stop for you, but the queen will continue hitting you, and that's what got me at the first one. I, the okay. RS lag, I couldn't get to the first one enough, and I was like, well, too late. But and you know, those... just for anybody wondering, your gravestone spawns outside uh, near where the cave entrance is in Remington, so it's relatively easy, I imagine, to run back there within the uh, ten minutes that you have. Well, to be honest, um, you can if you wherever you are, you can one choose when you die, you can choose to teleport to Falador, which you can just run to, run down there really quick. Right, or two, is or or two, just take the uh, poor Samron. Uh, to, uh, lodestone, you're you're basically there, okay. so you don't have to. You don't even have to worry. You don't like you, know, you can. I got back there like thirty seconds, so you don't well, really have to worry about bad, it. Then. Um, yeah, so you can have like the cheapest stone, but I think if you're level one hundred twenty, you would not have the cheapest stone anyway. Yeah, that's true. Unless you're Mike, but uh, so far that's basically it. You just have to keep your wits up about you and. Hopefully you have a better computer than I did at the time with RS lag. So and, is it so? Can you fight it with rage the entire time, or do you have to switch combat types? Um, you don't have to switch. Uh, although some people have said that you know you may want to switch to melee for the torture souls, but I don't really think you have to. Uh, I killed them just fine with my range as it was. It was just that uh, the lagginess of RS at the time was getting to me. I couldn't. I would spend more. I spent more time. Try to keep myself alive than actually fighting the tortured soul. Right. Um, so, what kind of equipment did you use? Um, I just I use my I use the armadale set, my full armadale set. But you can use full barrels, I believe. Uh, that works just as fine, just as well. But I think if you die, it comes zero percent, so that may hurt you. Yeah, that's true. Um. What about yeah, weaponry? Uh, Weaponry, I just use, I was using the Ruin crossbow because that was the only crossbow I have. I don't have the I don't have the chaotic crossbow yet. And you were inflicting decent damage with ruby bolts, I assume. Yeah, I was doing decent. Okay, well, well that's good to know that uh, regular run in the middle combat gear will get you through it at least. I mean, um, of course, if you have a higher combat gear, you could probably uh, have an easier time at it. But in any case. <laughs> Yeah, and you know the other the other thing as well is, you know, I'm checking out. You just check out some of the videos on YouTube that's not related to this video here. I probably, if you're watching the video right now, I'm probably dead in about oh, two minutes or so. How long have we been here? Five minutes already? Yeah, around there. Yeah, so about three more minutes. I'm gonna die a horrible, horrible death when I was trying to record. <laughs> um, so that is yeah. if the video is is. Uh is fluid enough because you said it was laggy and I haven't been able to view it yet because I haven't converted it from Windows Media because remember this is OS X <laughs> uh, sorry I uh, forgot about that but eh, yeah uh, if you you know you can kill it it's just a little bit of uh, practice and I'm sure you anybody can do it if they spend some time in it although I might suggest that maybe if you're practicing it try using rock tails which are not as pricey and at least you'll get get the idea of it. And you won't. Why? What you were you using? What were you using? Sardi Brew. Ah, Sardi okay. Brew Super Restore. Don't you remember? Right. So I think if you decide to use Rock Tails, it may uh, be better because it's not as expensive with the Sardi Brew and Super Restore, and it's less time consuming. And yeah. it says, think you can survive the Grotewood swarms and or Groat Worm swarms and fire waves. So what kind of fire waves is this? Is there like some kind of fire wave aside from the fire that comes from the dragon? That is the fire that comes from the dragon. Oh, okay. Uh, the, if you, you know, during the video, you will see that once in a while the queen will spit out a wall of fire, basically a fire wall, and there's a, just there's only one gap which you have to get to to not get any damage. Oh, okay, so kind of like that uh, fire quest. Fire. Mm-hmm. Kind of like um, what's it call it? All fired up. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, but you know, although it's not difficult, it's just one of those. Uh, you know, if you practice enough, you can do it. Yeah, um, I've that, had that's people... a, that's the impression I'm getting from this, and you know, it is soloable, so it, it can't be that hard. And oh, I wouldn't yeah. want to displace somebody like uh, Jad or uh, whatever the guy's name is in the fight kill, and I forget as a uh, top boss. So. And I remember, but you get a dragon kite shield, which I don't know how much yeah, it's worth um, right now. But um, you know, I'm a little disappointed in it. 
Yeah, I was going to say the same thing because Dragon Kite Shield, it is on par with the other dragon items, but like, there's no point in this day and age to be using a a, a dragon-based piece of equipment because, well, quite frankly, there are better things to use than that. Uh, the only reason you'd use a Dragon Kite Shield is if you want a full dragon set. And it's not even as expensive as I thought it would be. It's only 886k today. Well, I've had people who said that. I've had people who said they've sold it for like you know close to two mil or so or well, higher. Well, yeah, that's probably that's just a first day someone, type of thing. Yeah, someone random. But this exchange price is what the majority of the items are going to be selling for. Mm-hmm. Um, my my one thing that I'm disappointed in it is not that you know the stats are low. It's the fact that it, it doesn't it doesn't treat itself as a anti dragon uh, dragon shield. And, you know, you spent all this time killing the Queen Black Dragon, which is the most powerful mo- dragon and monster in the game. When... Combat level 2100. Yeah. And so it's like, well, shouldn't Dragon Kite Shield be able to resist Dragon Fire? I mean, you know, why don't why don't we start re- uh, for those who are using the uh, anti, anti-fire anti Dragon Shield thingy? I can't remember the full name of it right now. Just the Dragon Fire Shield. And yeah. No, it sh- I'm going to disagree with you and say that no, it shouldn't because um, it's just like any other piece of uh, metal armor. It's not designed to be multi-use like that. It's just designed to be an expansion to the dragon set, which we're seeing, even though it's uh, 10 years after the dragon items started first coming out. The set is now practically complete. We're just missing some random weapons that nobody uses like Warhammer, uh, throwing axes. What else? I don't know, but useless things. So I think for all intents and purposes, the dragon equipment set is complete. I still think it should it should have a you know the ability to resist dragon fire. I mean, you're it's from the belly of the beast. Yeah, I, I guess I guess with that uh, idea in mind, but I mean, it doesn't make sense that it would. Maybe through an add-on or something, it might, but. That might have been something worth adding as a drop to the Queen Black Dragon because I don't think it drops anything else useful aside from the uh, Royal Dragon Hides, which lets you uh, create Royal uh, Dragon Armor. Mm-hmm. So, so far, I think those are selling pretty well. Yeah, but they're going to be down eventually. Uh, for instance, like the body, twenty-seven uh, k on the exchange. So. Requires 80 ranged and 93 crafting, so it's going to be the next uh, step up from, of course, Black Dragon Hide. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how this compares with, say, the Carl's Top, uh, because we haven't added that yet to the equipment calculator. But let me just have a look here and see what the Carl's uh, bonuses are. Because it, it would be interesting to see if they decided that it's time to displace uh, the Carl's Barrows item with this thing. Mm-hmm. The next step up? Because we, yeah, because we didn't see this coming when this happened. So the Carl Leather Top has a has a ranged attack bonus of plus 30. This has plus 32. Uh, its defense bonuses, uh, Carl's, are 47, 42, 50, 65, and 57, whereas the Royal Dragon Hide Body is 56, 48, 61, 57, 66, and 65. So this is indeed better than Carl's now, and it does not degrade. <laughs> so Carl's going to drop down like a rock. Yeah, and that was always one of the cheapest Barrow sets, too. So Because nobody wants it for the set effect. They just wanted a set of decent armor. Mm-hmm. I don't... I'm not... There's nothing really on this set that would make you use Carl's over uh, over Royal Dragonhide now. Mm. Well, that was nice. It was nice to use Carl's armor while it was useful. <laughs> See you later, Carl. Wee, bye, Carl. Yeah, okay. Bar- Barrow's has been going down recently. Damn, nobody really uses them anymore. Yeah, because there's so much other better stuff out there. So... Anyways, is there anything else we need to mention bes- with the Queen Black Dragon here? It's huge. 
<laughs> biggest uh, NPC ever? Uh, apparently it should be because you're only seeing the top part of his head. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, That's you know, if you remember during the quest, you only saw the head. So uh, imagine what it would be like if if uh, you saw the whole body. Uh, it'll probably wrapped around Varrock at least twice. <laughs> And remember, you were in the belly of the beast. And also remember that uh, if you have done too. Song from the Depths, the last week's quest, you do get a damage reduction when you're mm-hmm. fighting the QBD. So it is good to uh, do that. And uh, you, did you try the uh, the coral? Uh, no, I, I did not have whatnot. enough armor to try, and I don't think it would have done much of a difference between that and, and uh, between this one and uh, Ruby Ruby Bolts. Primarily because you know mine's supposed to be like you know the lowest level, and you're supposed to keep killing it to get to upgrade it. So I just I, yeah, I don't can... see it being uh, you know powerful enough anyway. But... Yeah, you can get uh, little pieces from the QBD to uh, upgrade it. Like for instance, uh, a torsion spring, a sight, and a bolt stabilizer, and then you'll end up upgrading it, and the crossbow will at the end of the day end up having a ranged attack bonus of 135. Woo-hoo! And if we look at look at other weapons... I um, think the chaotic crossbow uh, is better than that one, I believe. Yeah, the uh, chaotic... Or no, never mind. Uh, magic longbow sighted, but of course, who's going to use a magic longbow because they're just so slow? Uh, chaotic crossbow is a 120 range uh, attack bonus. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, better than the chaotic crossbow too. Hmm. Uh, sadly, it's uh, one of those we have to kill it probably, you know, hundred hundred fifty times to get it. <laughs> to yeah, get but but at the end of the day, <coughs> you'll get it because uh, if you're uh, the type of person who goes to do the uh, NPCs and whatnot, uh, this is something you'll be doing multiple times a day, and I I don't see it taking that long to get probably. Yeah, but, you know, most of those people already have a couple billion gold anyway, and they just don't care about the money. Uh, yeah, so... But it's nice to get them to lose some of their cash, even though it's only for a fleeting second. Yeah, and, and it's not going to take that long, and you can buy the pieces to upgrade the crossbow on the exchange. So <sighs> they'll drop eventually, too. Sorry. So even if you wanted this crossbow, there'd be no reason why you'd have to fight the QBD to do it if, unless you didn't want to. So, Anyways, that's, okay, uh, that's that part of the update. Uh, next up is the Diamond Jubilee the celebration. This is the part that I uh, went to cover because uh, for anybody who is not aware, uh, June 2nd tomorrow is what is officially called the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. So that just means she's been on the throne for 60 years, so since 1952. And, you know, since Jagex is a UK company, they are covering this uh, <laughs> because they want to celebrate their heritage, which, which is a perfectly uh, good thing to do. And as a matter of fact, uh, websites, uh, I think it was The Guardian in the UK, uh, had a write-up on this uh, update in RuneScape, basically uh, saying that uh, Jagex is doing this to uh, celebrate the Diamond Jubilee, and they were telling their readers all about it, so uh, Jagex made the Guardian. Mm. But in any case, uh, what you end up having to do here is, uh, well, there, there's a few little tasks. Uh, first things first, the Varrock is uh, set up differently. There's no more fountain in the center that just mysteriously disappeared overnight. Kind of interesting mm. how that can happen. But in any case, uh, there you can buy all sorts of things like uh, celebration cakes, hats, flags, confetti, uh, fireworks, firecrackers, um, fish and chips. Um, fish and chips. Yeah, a full breakfast. Uh, basically, anything that says UK on it, that is what they do in the UK. You can buy there. So uh, fish and chips, of course, as everyone knows, tea. So it's basically just a UK heritage celebration there. Uh, there's a little task that you could do that involves you picking up a pet corgi because uh, the corgi is the favorite dog of the queen. So uh, six of them have disappeared throughout the world and you need to go uh, fetch them. And then once you uh, bring them all back, you will get a pet corgi to keep and it just follows you around like any other pet does. I want 
Hmm, I wonder if I can get it to fight like my Hellcat. Uh, no. Why not? I can, you know, put get some red. It's a paint dog. And... So, I can get a doggy. The dogs in RuneScape it. don't fight. Yes, yeah, so you can only shoo them away. I can get a little, you know, doggy treadmill for it, train it out to be a vicious fighter. <laughs> I don't think you could do that with a corgi. You hit it hit it long enough, you will. Ah, uh, that would you be must, animal abuse. You must, you must make it angry. That would be animal abuse. Um, technically, also, technically, it would be I... a pixel abuse, Shane, not animal abuse. <sighs> well... Uh, the person you talk to is named Mini Coop, so it, it's kind of funny because you know there's a car called the Mini Cooper, and this person's name is Mini Coop. So, I mean, Jagex always throws little puns in like this everywhere you go. I don't know if it serves any relevance, but it's definitely interesting to see where these all come from. Okay. And uh, then, of course, we got the Cryptic Clue Fest, which started today, the first of June. So. Uh, of course, over the next uh, week or so, you'll be getting these clues, and you can go get a second Jubilee-themed uh, reward from this. So just take a walk through Varrock, enjoy the uh, the celebration to the Queen, and uh, <clears throat> learn how it's done in the UK and other Commonwealth countries. So um, how long is this event for? Um, I'm assuming it's going to be in uh, through next week because the Cryptic Clue Fest is still going to be on going on. Uh, when the when the game is updated next week, so I assume it's going to be here till the week of the eleventh. Okay. Yeah, that's just what I think. Let me check. Maybe this one. Yeah. So I don't have anything else to say about the Jubilee event, but uh, uh, definitely go check it out. And if you're around uh, on Saturday morning or this weekend, just uh, tune into uh, CNN. They've got. Jubilee coverage live from the UK. Very cool. Okay, and you you mentioned? Did you mention about the Mad Necklace? The Mad Necklace? Yeah. Uh, I guess it was released yesterday because it's one twenty one hundred uh, twenty one hours ago. Oh Maybe. right, we're gonna get there. I think. Oh right. Sorry, I missed a note. Yeah, we're oh, we're, we're getting it. there. Okay, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Shane. Uh, tw- that's okay. That's okay. Tweaks and fixes now. Um, as I said, the gravestone, uh, if you're in that dungeon, will spot you outside. So that's good, I guess, if you've died three or four times at the QBD so far. Thank you, Shane. Also, they uh, released some music tracks from the uh, Queen Black Dragon area. I'll just play a short selection here for you guys. Did you turn music on when you were in the fight? I had it on. I had uh, everything okay. on, semi low, because uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to blow out my eardrums. But to be honest, I was too focused on the fight to really listen to it. <laughs> okay. Um. I mean, this song is uh, it's just entitled "Queen Black Dragon," and I think it sets the tone for what the Queen Black Dragon is quite well, and it it's. Uh, kind of like a battle song that you use if you're uh, in a fight or something you know so uh definitely uh good that they're keeping on this direction in the high quality music so uh, you can uh, download this on the downloads page on their website Whee! so release notes anything in the release notes that you uh, want to mention um well let's see bone crusher now functions correctly with grot worms that's good uh Let's see. Trade checker no longer allows free to play uh, players to trade freely if they try to trade over 2.1 billion worth of items. Um, that's interesting. Um, just those two, really, because I think those are the semi two biggest one. Uh, yeah, um, that's interesting that there was a trade tracker issue that let you trade more than 2.1 billion worth of items when that's been a self-imposed limit for however long you know yeah no they never thought anybody would ever reach that limit and they were dead wrong and it's and it's broken on free-to-play when i think free-to-plays are the least likely to reach that limit 
Oh, you never know. Trading trading okay. runes can get you quite a lot of money, depending on how you sell it. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Um, also, uh, with this, if you have anything uh, else that uh, you're interested in finding out about this, you could, of course, read this on the uh, show notes at update.rsbnb.com. So next up is the right royal costumes on the Squeal of Fortune. Hmm. So Did running throughout one? the summer months, two impressive new clothing sets will be obtainable as unique prizes on the Squeal of Fortune. There are five pieces of clothing for each of the two must-have sets, so you'll be feeling you'll be need to be lucky in order to bag all ten. Don't forget the more spins you have at your disposal, the better chance you have of snagging all the items and getting all this something you'll certainly want to do. Uh, the first outfit is the Queen's Guard uniform. This is taking this is an, on an uncommon spot on the wheel. So okay. this one's not going to be that hard to get because uncommon is relatively uh, common at least a few times a week for me. Uh, yeah, I've been getting lamps the whole week. Yeah, me too, actually. You know, Yesterday, I got uh, two medium labs and a small app. You know, like, you remember uh, when this first came out and I told you that, you know, you can press the button at a certain point and you, I, I can almost guarantee you it will end within, like, those within like those three spaces? I don't think so. It does for me. Because, really? you know, I, I still time it. I still, like, all right, I'm aiming for, I'll aim for... Uh, you know, the silver lamp here because, you know, it, there's like two other lamps in the area. All right, let's see. It's up here. One, I count from that spot, count nine to the left, and, you know, go backwards. And I guarantee if you press a button when the selection screen is just about there, within those three spots, you will get an item within those three. And I have not yet, mm-hmm. I have not yet failed. And a couple times because I misclicked, but I have not yet failed. Okay. I don't so believe I, that, but whatever you say. Yeah, still works for me. So the second outfit is cere- <clears throat> dragon ceremonial clothes made in honor of the queen black dragon. Uh, this includes the dragon ceremonial hat, breastplate, greaves, boots, and cape. And these will be on rare slots. Now, I'm wondering what happens with this if at the end of the summer you <clears throat> end up getting only part of each outfit. Like, it doesn't make sense that you're not going to be able to get the full outfit. Because for me, there's no point in having an outfit if you don't have the full set. For two reasons. Because first reason, sometimes you might want to wear the full set. And secondly, to store it in a player-owned house, you need to have the full set. So, I mean, it just doesn't make sense that you're only getting this in... uh, You have to get them piece by piece. And what's to say you'll end up getting the entire set over the summer? I mean, it would just be nice if they came as sets on the thing and made them both as rare, or even uh, rare and uh, super rare, or whatever, I guess it would be. Because it just doesn't sit well with me that it's half a set that you could end up getting. I have no interest in it, so it doesn't matter to me. <clears throat> okay. Well, I, I'd be interested in getting the uh, Queen's Guard uniform, which I guess is a good thing because it's uh, one, it's the easier one to get. <laughs> But, uh, you know, um, you, they can always sell the clothes on their own site in the future. Sell it yeah, for, they could you know, do that. Three bucks, three bucks, five bucks. I would not put it past them to do it in the future. You never know. And, you know, that might be a better way of doing it because uh, at the end of the day, do you want people to – well, I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, it makes sense that you want people to be – putting money on Squeal of Fortune because it's like just a way of earning money through some kind of quick form of little gambling. So, I mean, and there's a rush that comes with that. So so that's why they want to do it on Squeal of Fortune rather than just put it up. But it would be nice if they had it up on their website too. Hmm. Uh, but more Squeal of Fortune news. Uh, they re-upped the prizes this week. I think this is a good change. What about you? Oh, I managed to get 10k this week instead of you know 150 gold. <laughs> like okay, yeah. um, not you know not bad, but you know could be better. Yeah, that's um, true. Um, Ten times the chance to win super rare cosmetic items, 
More coin prizes added that appear frequently, including 5,000, 50,000, and 500,000 GP prizes. Uh, coin prizes substantially increased in value. For example, the 50 GP prize is now 1,000 GP. Uh, more useful items and increased quantities. So, for instance, I this week I got some tanned uh, green dragon hide leather. So it it makes it uh, it's just stuff that you might want to use around your game more than say uh, useless stuff like a cabbage or something. You know. Hmm. I also got twenty oak planks. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's uh, two oak doors. Yeah. And this is what I mentioned, construction and fletching supplies, uh, crafting and smithing materials, more gems from sapphire to diamond, uh, combat com- consumables such as arrows and runes, and much more. And they say, we'd like to reassure players that we, we have thought very carefully about which items to add and remove and increase the likelihood of. We made these changes with a full set of statistics and a healthy wedge of player behavior data to add. Well, of course they have player behavior data now that squeal fortune's been out for almost uh, three months now <laughs> mm. so. uh let's see Sh- overall i think it's a good thing uh let's start out behind the scenes june now since it is june and it looks like it's gonna be a very light month what do you think mm. Oh no, we got the combat beta thing. We have the whole signing up within the I next know, two weeks. I know, that's why I'm saying it, it looks like it's going to be a light month because the only thing mentioned in the behind the scenes June article is Fish Flingers improvements, the Crucible, and of course the combat betas. So, Fish Flingers, as we all know, is that uh, distraction and diversion that came out. When did that come out? Was that last year or was that 2010? I think it was last year. I never went back after the first uh, week or so it was out. What about you? Really? Um, pretty much the same thing because I already had 99 fishing. I had no reason to really stay at the fishing guild. I think they should do it in a rock, uh, in the uh, uh, rock tail place, but uh, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Yeah, probably not. Um, <clears throat> so... The first thing they say is the rework will dramatically increase the accessibility so that's easier to get to fish flaggers games between bouts of normal fishing. Not only will the start points be permanent additions to the map, but will add more than popular fishing areas through the game. Competitions will be held far more frequent, running every te- 20 minutes, and you'll be able to claim two tickets per day rather than just 10 per week. So that's 14 per week rather than 10 per week. So a little bit more but not that much um big fish feature to the game players will have to cooperate with each other to land these big whoppers but the xp rewards will make uh the extra effort worthwhile for all and they say so get involved and don't be coy because you know what coy is don't you Mm -hmm. a coy is a fish that's a great one don't you think Mm -hmm. okay then they say you don't want to be the cod one out. Uh, <laughs> bad pun, Shane. Well, you know, I, I just think it's uh, it's good to be talking about these things because uh, the koi one out, okay, I get that, but cod one out. Uh, what, what's the first thing you hear, think of when you hear cod? cod? Cape cod? No, Call of Duty. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. I have not played those games in years kind of for since they kind of screwed us up with number two. <laughs> so, um, don't be coy or else you'll be the cod one out. Uh, Lame. Cool. I love that. We'll also completely overhaul the nature and uh, the potential rewards. Fishing XP will be tweaked to reward fishes who find the best tackle combinations available you'll also be able to earn a brand new set of fishing gear similar to the lumberjack outfit and the golden mining gear <laughs> how do you feel about that well unless you're gonna put it in a rock tail place i'm not going to be fishing sharks in the fishing guild and i probably won't remember well, to probably go be able there. to use this worldwide yeah but i probably won't remember to oh yeah i need to go over to the fishing place and in order to, you know, remember to do fish, fling, uh, fish flingers. I'm not going to remember it. But they said it's going to be a piece of equipment. 
they aware. No, but to get to fish flingers, you have to, you know, win and oh, do something. Oh, well, hopefully they'll uh, have a portal or whatever in the uh, rock tail area. Because that's just good to be like that. Mm. Uh, next up, the Crucible. The <laughs> Return of Bounty Hunter. What? What What? what you giggling about? Oh, it's just reminding me of Mass Effect. Okay. Uh, so they say back in 2011, remove the bounty mechanic from any of it. It was a style of PK you preferred to the traditional wilderness, and we promised we'd bring it back. Well, it's back, and this time better than ever. So uh, the Crucible is a giant arena. Players over combat level 60 can do battle with like-minded opponents. You'll be assigned another player, so it's essentially the same as it was before. Uh, the entire area is based around solo play, so no multi-way combat. And combat can only be engaged between targets, so no rushing or PJ. That's good, I think. It's more, it's, it's more like a civilized form of uh, PKing than I guess. I might be See. interested in trying that. Even though I'm not much of a PK in this game. Yeah, you know what you should do, Shane? Just grab a uh, grab a dagger and then run into it with an inventory full of full of wheat. Full of wheat? Yep, full of wheat. I see. I don't think that would do good, but... Uh... I did that before as a joke to someone else. Oh, okay. Oh, and then you drop, you just drop nothing but wheat. Mm-hmm. Uh, a <laughs> while back, my, my, one of my friends was peeking with this little group, and so I decided to kind of, quote-unquote, crash it. So I went up there with a small sword. And I said, I'm going to kill you all. And then they killed me. I was like, you hackers. And I gave them a full inventory full of wheat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I bet, I bet they did not expect that at all. Yeah. Um, so if you have a high ranking within the, within a Crucible game, you'll have the chance to be tele- temporarily elevated to Supreme Champion. You'll be rendered invincible for a whole minute. We give an access to a raft of brand new weapons that can only be used within the Crucible, so you can go mad, crazy rampage where you go on a mad, crazy rampage where you can slaughter everyone in your way. We're also relying on a special combat calculation to assign targets. This means your targets will be of an ability level that is equal or similar to your own, so skill and knowledge will rule the land. Okay. That's good, I guess. Hmm. And of course, a new high score table with this, so definitely something to keep an eye out on. Sounds good. Then, of course, the combat beta. So let's just uh, change tracks and head on over to the combat beta. Uh, we'll come back to the Mad May results in just a minute. So combat beta, sign-up's now open. Did you sign up? Yeah, I did. Okay, I think everybody, everybody who's... Has a design who's been there for over a year or so, you're, you just have to go on there and you're automatically in. Yeah. And, you know, that's a good thing. Get as many people as you can trying it, all kinds of permutations and combinations, because uh, you can only test so much in a limited uh, test environment, as we saw in this video here that they have uh, posted of showing the first videos of what the new combat system is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Um I never played WoW, but apparently some of this stuff looks kind of WoW-ish. What do you think? You've played other MMOs. Uh, well, uh, well, usually one of these other games I used to play was Guild Wars, Guild Wars One, and there are some, and you know, going to Guild Wars Two, there are some things that you know that's basically all the same with all MMOs. You have an AOE attack, and you have some way of stunning the enemy, and they did mention that you get to bleed people. Um. So the way I saw it was like, all right, for melee, melee, what happened, if you look at the video, he did a charge ability, which is, you know, lots of other games have it. Click, click a little charge to get in front of the enemy because you need to get within melee range in the first place and you have a bunch of attacks. You have stab, head, cr- hits, head crushing, and uh, slashing, and everything else. With range, uh, I felt it was more like a rogue because you can kind of teleport away from the enemy, away from, you know, being in melee range. And you can also... Use a bunch of again AOE spells uh, with you know like raining fire uh, and pin down and you know take arrow to the knee. Uh, <laughs> thirdly, you know the mag- the mage. The one that I thought was interesting was you get to change uh, what element you are, which I don't know how that affects the game, but 
it's, it'll be interesting. Change I which think element you are. Remember you know, the the major in the video? He changed into a fire, you know, fire goddess type of thing. Oh right, okay. So I'm assuming, depending on which one you have, will will uh, give you special powers. I think what happened with the fire one is that he let you run faster because I kind of noticed that he ran a little bit faster when he was in fire when fire mode. Water, I'm thinking he may be immune to conditions for a little bit. Earth, if you're Earth, I'm thinking, um, you know, higher defense bonus. I don't know about air. Um, air's iffy. Um, but, air might um, not have anything special since it's the most basic form of uh, energy, you know, and it might just be a way oh, to move I, around freely. I think it may be help to guarantee missing or something from the enemy. But that's an, that's an assumption, you know. Be light on your feet, type of thing. But yeah, so um, um, if you've been in the beta, or if you've been a member for a, a year consecutively, you can sign up at RuneScape dot com slash combat, or uh, click the combat beta contract in your inventory. Hmm. Apparently, when this came out, they were having some major issues with the uh, website because so many people were trying to sign up for the beta. Mm-hmm. Which is to be expected. Mm-hmm. Um, on the same track of combat here, they've got the um, they've got the they've got a little uh, dev blog here on this uh, from Mod Mark calls himself Og. So this is the Og blog. <laughs> so for instance, there's a number of things they say that they uh, uh, challenges they've set themselves over to come and in later blogs they'll be telling how they've met them so for instance i'm just going to run through these you stop me if there's one we you think we should discuss um refocus combat to be more about player skill encourage variety in combat equipment make it fun make it easier to access give rangers and mages a fighting chance Oh. And this is this 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 is the biggest thing in my view. They say the combat triangle can be less of a triangle or more of a pancake, flat and a little out of shape. I'm glad they're finally admitting this, given that it's been however many years since the combat triangle has actually been a triangle. It's never been a triangle. I've died to rangers many times on my melee, and I'm wearing uh, some of the best gear in the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I said. So, um, so that's good. They'll be uh, filling that in. Uh, filling see. gaps in existing equipment tier so for instance they say magic armor is rare and generally caters for a small level bracket while melee and ranger sets are missing gloves and boots um encouraging challenging fights so they want the most challenging and rewarding fun creatures to be the most efficient creatures to fight i uh, at the moment it could seem more efficient to train on creatures that deal little damage and go down without a fight so i uh, I mean, this is another thing that people always do. People would always grind combat even back in the early days of RS2. So uh, good they're addressing this. Uh, this is another good one. Fix the relationship between defense, life points, and damage output. Your ability to heal damage through food or similar mechanics should be comparable to how much damage you receive. That's not quite true at the moment, and we'd like to address that. So more damage you take, the less food will heal you? I don't know whether it's that or the other way around. Huh. Well, um, you know, uh, one thing I'm... Well, you finish up first and then I'll say what I think about it. No, because mine's on the next point, so you can just uh, say what you were going to say on this one. Well, it's not Well, it's not related to this one. It's kind of like it. Um, the combat system in general... They want it to be more about skill. Um, that doesn't really happen when you have a lot of teenagers running around. And <laughs> you, most of not even, you know, I guarantee you this has never, ever failed in any of the MMOs I play. <clears throat> You'll try and get a, get a group of people to do a mission or a quest, and there will always, always be that one person who is completely clueless to what the hell Are they're doing. Are you referring to the other night on STFs? No. Well, that too, but, you know, all in most in general. Um, you know, even when I was in Guild Wars and I was, you know, pugging a small group, there was always that one or two, one person who was just like completely stupid on what they're doing. Never fails. So now they're talking about trying to get skilled. Your demo demographic are, you know, pretty much from 
preteens all the way to you know majority is in their twenties because you know, people in their twenties used think to play. I they have some issue with this point allow player combat levels to truly represent their ability. Meaning, uh, I think some people are going to be upset that uh, the, their peers who are less than 100 combat are not <laughs> going to be as successful as the higher level ones, because that's exactly what I read into this point here. Um, the combat level calculator is complex, complicated and encourages players to not train certain skills in an attempt to create a false impression of their damage potential. Peers in brackets. So I, I think we're, I think we're going to see a huge backlash on that probably but based on the fact that this is such a big system like this i don't think we're going to be seeing much caving in towards that which is ultimately a good thing because jagex needs to make decisions on their own in this case Mm -hmm. but you know one other thing that i'm a little bit worried about is the whole um you want to get players more interacted into the game uh i think that's a good and bad Here's why I think it's bad. It's one, you know, one, thing, one thing about RS Combat is you know, it's simplicity. You, know, you basically click on something, you hit it, and then you're doing something else as you're waiting for the, tick to, for the fight to finish. And most of the time, Shane, things people train on that's relatively low and fast to kill and easy to kill, and you're not really worried about uh, you know, focusing on, in the game itself. So like, this may actually hurt some of the multitaskable objective of the game, in my, in my view. Uh, the other side is well, if they made it so you have to respond to the enemy, that it would completely hurt uh, bots a lot because respond they're probably to the enemy. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking like remember you saw in how uh, during the video you had different attack styles. Well, I'm assuming that if you're fighting so and so monster and they you know put up a shield up, maybe you you won't keep slashing at it. You'll start right, crushing you it. Choose a different style. Right, I see. Or use a specific uh, attack or ability to weaken it or get rid of it or you know whatever it is. I don't see bots not yet being smart enough to really do that. Um, you know, if they were to program it, program it in, I don't. I think bots take them forever. But you never. You know, I learned never underestimate the ability of people to try and find ways around around stuff. Yeah, but. Uh, okay. That's that's my two cents on it. I think it may hurt right. some of the uh, AFK training ability, but it may also get rid of a lot of bots. Yeah, that's true. That'll be interesting to see. Another thing to say is simplify the code and balancing. We want to add more high-level equipment to the game, but the existing system can make this extremely difficult. Okay, so that's decent, I guess. And be brave, but be traditional where possible. We are a game with a proud heritage and a player base with clear expectations of the game they want to play. We do not want to make a game that we can't even recognize anymore. Which is, of course, true, because combat is such a huge portion of this game. Mm-hmm. Um, everything, everything here is pretty much combat-related one way or another. shiny poo Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just I just thought I needed to have a, have a sneeze or something, but I didn't. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. Mad May rewards and the Cryptic Clue Fest. So as we mentioned, the Cryptic Clue Fest is now underway. Uh, go wild. Get whatever the reward's going to be this time. Um, as promised in our original Mad May news post, players who kept their membership subscription active through the month of May will f- soon find they have two exclusive rewards waiting for them. First off, there's the Mad Necklace. Whenever you're equipped, the Mad Necklace will double any XP you earn and any skills you choose to train, up to a total of 250,000 bonus XP. So this Woo-hoo! means that if you do 250,000 summoning XP, you will get 500,000 XP for the work. I should have waited to train summoning. Woohoo! Uh, so that effectively means that I think you might have enough charms for 88. Woohoo! Oh, hell, um, that's going to take me forever still. But it'll also work in Dungeoneering, so if you want to use it in Dungeoneering, you can do that. And you can go collect this from Diango's stall in Drainer Village. Uh, what do you make in Drainer Village? Something I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't like that place anymore. They made it too dark. It's, it's like it's always nighttime. Oh, well, you are more or less in the middle of a forest. Yeah, I guess, but still. Um... Secondly, players, the same eligible players will find that they have an extra 5,000 loyalty points. 
me. That's not yeah, much. That's good. Well, I I don't know what I'm gonna buy with mine. I have all these points stacking up. I I might have enough for the next version of Reverence Aura. That's the main one I've been upgrading. So maybe I'll buy that. I don't know. And they say, please note the eligible players is the list of eligible players is still being processed and should be completed within the next few hours. So hopefully by the time you're hearing this on Saturday, everything will be uh, all in order. That means we're done for RS updates. <laughs> 